Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Cornell. Make sure my volume up. Apologize. I have come to share some information that I have received, Lord willing, and I'm asking you pray about it. I'm just going to present the evidence that I have found and lay it before you, and you take the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. I had a lady email me. Uh, her name is Anita. I'm not going to give you any more information about her. And um, I am going to read her email. Because it's not private as far as giving off any personal information. I'll read what the Lord tells me or anything like that. But before we go into that, I want us to pray. This, this video will be titled Concerning Mary, the Mother of Jesus. So please pray. I apologize. I had to write that down because he just gave me the title. I didn't have it. I kept praying. What do you want to call it? All right. With that being said, let's pray. Let's get straight to this. Father God, I come to you, Lord. I come to you humbly. I come in the power and the might of Jesus Christ's name. Jesus Christ, I pray and ask that you answer this. Father God, put the law of kindness in my mouth and let me speak in love. Let me just present what you have shown me. Because I went into this praying, Lord, you show me your truth. Not with a made-up mind. And I ask the Holy Spirit, you to lead me to the truth. You are the teacher. You are the comforter. Matthew 14, 26. And I stood on these words and I've laid this before you and I've been praying and fasting since this has come up. I don't pro profess to be anything but a child of God. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you step in and you help me in all that I do. Help me not to unintentionally hurt a brother or sister in Jesus Christ. But Lord, if what I'm speaking is the truth and I'm praying and asking Holy Spirit, you do not let me speak a word that's not from Jesus Christ or Father God or from you. You shut me down if I am. But I ask you take these words wherever they need to go. Because the end result is my concern is for each soul and where they're going to spend their eternity. We let so many things into our lives, but we don't realize that that gives a stronghold to the enemy. Lord, help us to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves, as your word once said, in all things. We have to be strong and there's time to be righteously angry like Jesus you were when you threw the table over, the tables over with the money changers. But everything must be done in love. So Jesus Christ, help me to do this and walk in your love in all things. Now I cancel every assignment by the enemy in all existence known to God because God exists everywhere, physical and spiritual, including Evil communications, weapons, gizmo gadgets, you know, woohoo, wahoo, wannabe powers, and all that garbage, Father, is what it is, garbage, because your word says, Behold, I give unto you all power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you if we could just get it into our hearts and understand all power over the enemy, all power through Jesus Christ. Maybe we quit letting him beat us around so much. In Jesus Christ's name, let's stand up and fight and be what we're called to do. We are not defeated. We let the devil and Satan, he's done this to me in the past, but no more in Jesus Christ's name with the Lord's help talk to us and condemn us and make us feel that we can't walk in the power of God because we're still battling in our flesh and we're, well, guess what? We're going to battle in our flesh till the time we're out of here. We are not righteous in our own self. Our righteousness is through Jesus Christ and him alone. And Jesus Christ is going to be continually working on us to the very end. So Father God, let us rise up and be what we're called to be in you. And not let condemnation from the enemy 
stop us. Father God, you showed me from the start. Conviction is from the Holy Spirit. Conviction shows you when you're doing something wrong so you can change it. Condemnation is from the enemy. Condemning you, making you feel worthless and useless for things that you've done. That's not God. He will convict and deal with you out of love. Satan will condemn you. He will throw it on you, make you feel horrible, and keep piling it on if we let him. There's now no more condemnation in them who who live in Christ Jesus. There's no more condemnation. We are not condemned by the actions of Adam and Eve that brought sin into the world. We are not living under the law of sin. We're not living under the law of Moses. We're living under the new grace covenant. Grace. And that grace is activated by you accepting Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior and nothing else. The grace that's given unto salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Lord, I've already prayed and asked to be put under the barrier of stealth and invisibility for no retaliation, no interference, no backlash. I bind all those demons too. I've already canceled every demon and every spirit that's been assigned in all existence known to God because God exists everywhere, wrapping them in everlasting chains, dismantling all their assignments, cutting their cords, commanding them not to do what they're called to do. And yes, I did ask for grievous, I ask now, grievous torments, heavy burdens. And I ask, Father God, that also that you would just pour down the, the fire as close to the lake of fire as you can on them and not let them be reassigned in Jesus Christ's name. Send this out wherever it needs to go, Lord. And again, let everyone realize I am not pointing fingers. I'm, I'm doing this in love. And you said to answer this for everybody. So help me to do this, Father. In your name, for your glory, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, <clears throat> give me. This is not something I like to do, but I will do whatever the Lord tells me to do. Again, this is concerning Mary, the mother of Jesus. I had made a comment that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was no longer a virgin. Because she had other kids, and this brought this question on. Because the Bible mentions other children. And there's different solutions in this. Like I said, excuse me. I did not dismiss it, everything because I want to know the truth. So I'm good. This, this may be a little lengthy, but I want you to understand too what's out there. All right. Hi, Vicki. Um, a little. Although at first I was discouraged when you said in your YouTube you don't want people to try to change your mind about the virginity of Mary, the mother of Jesus, I was again encouraged to share the below revelation, direct revelation of Jesus to Franz Shumi in regard to how many children Mary have had. Because you said in today's YouTube video, the Patriarch Lady Dream 316.23, 3.36 a.m., shared 1 20 24 that you're teachable i am i want to know the truth i want to know everything about jesus christ and his word that i can i would also like to recommend these books they contain a lot of clarification about the scriptures that jesus christ revealed directly by the way of inner word to his chosen vessels in 1800 to 1900 so this is from 1800 to 1900 excuse me and she gives a link. And I went to the link and, well, excerpt from Franz Shumi's book, Christ and the Bible. This was supposed to be Jesus Christ, and he's talking about the Bible. In regards to the children Mary has given birth to during her life on earth. Okay, starting with um 20.3, part of the book. Another gospel, which has become the original by another Matthew called Larabas and its contradictions. The pseudo, now pseudo means fake, a pretend name, pseudo. The pseudo, pseudo Matthew 
named Larabas, 55, a Greek by birth, was, was a writer in Sidon, converted to Christianity in the year 50, when he was 42 years old, and immediately began as a pious and truth-seeking man to write down from the collection fragments. And what he heard from less or more truth-loving eyewitnesses about the life, deeds, and teachings of Christ. He had written several stories which different differed from each other, which he improved according to the news that seemed credible to him. Out of the original 15 Gospels, hence the one circulating false Gospels, which he wrote, he combined the best and most credible into one Gospel of Matthew, which you now possess. He wrote only Hebrew, not Greek. He died in 69 after me, Jesus. Okay. I'm breaking down all these things. First thing. Let me go down to the next one. 13, because it's, it's 20.3. That was number 12, 13. The fact that pseudo, false, fake Matthew and Luke were not eyewitnesses but later collectors of existing records and narrative excuse narratives excuses them that some things are not true so this Jesus that's speaking to to this man uh, Franz Shumi is saying Matthew and Luke are not correct Okay, I'm still praying. He said in here that Matthew and Luke were not eyewitnesses. That is true about Luke. But Matthew was one of the twelve disciples. He was called by Jesus himself. That's in Matthew 9, 9. And as Jesus passed from Forth from thence he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of customs. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And it's again in Luke 5, 27, 28. And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi. Those who you take the two stories and compare, you know Levi and Matthew is the same. Sitting at the receipt of customs. And he said, Follow me. And he left and rose up and followed me. Okay, when that's Matthew and Luke, that's the two he's saying is not correct, right? So I went to Mark. Mark 2, 14. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. So we have three different books saying that Matthew was called by Jesus Christ himself. I said, Lord, is there any other verses <clears throat> anywhere that's going to put Matthew around the time of Jesus? Because there's not a lot about him. In the Bible. Acts 1.13 And when they were come. Oh, let me read this first. There were 50 days between Jesus Christ's resurrection. And the day of Pentecost. Matthew is listed among those in the upper room. With the other 10 disciples. Remember Judas had, had betrayed Jesus and hung himself. Proving he was very much alive. And among those who. I witnessed Jesus Christ's life and miracles. The verse Acts one thirteen, And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zealots and Judas the brother of James. So there you have four different things that says Jesus was in that inner circle. I mean, Matthew was in Jesus' inner circle. Still, I'm, I'm I'm going further because I wanted to give a thorough thorough study on this. And, and I'm going to use the Bible. But I will also make references to other things because guess what? The Bible has been proven to be there's 20, uh, approximately 2,500 prophecies in the Bible. Over 2,000 have been made without error up to date so far without error and then you have the bible archaeology that's coming up 
that's proven, like the, the city of David they said didn't exist, Pontius Pilate that didn't exist. Yeah, it's all coming out. So I'm going to stick with the Bible, but I'm going to take this into to 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 give it a thorough understanding. Then we come down to number 14. Then one must also take into a, the fact the apostles were Jews and therefore mix some Jewish things with Christians. Now this is fake Jesus talking. I'm, I'm calling him fake Jesus because that's what he is. It's, it's a spirit of error, perversion, which is a spirit of error. This is what it is because he does not even know the correct location of verses in his own word of God. If it was Jesus, he'll give you exactly. He has no error in Jesus Christ. And I'm sorry, Anita, but this is what I have found by prayerfully praying and going through every single verse the fake Jesus has provided. One must also take into account the fact that the apostles were Jews and therefore mixed some other Jewish things with Christian in their own good views and left them as Christian truths. But if you, but for you, it is enough that you know the truth only in so far as to distinguish the core from the shell. But to give some proof of the truth of what has been said, some such passages shall be discussed. Now I have done prayed over this and sealed this so that nothing evil will come out of it. I do that on anything. I, 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 because things come in, things are sent out. I just, I'm praying over everything. Praying over your ears not to receive anything that's not good. So number one in this, Larabas, Matthew, fake Matthew, verse 122-125. It's talking about, um, I'm going to address more of this later on this part because it's about the conception. I'm going to read you what, what, what he said. And, and like I said, I did not just say, oh, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm throwing, I said, okay, Lord, show me your truth. In this and that's what I have done Anita show me your truth Jesus Christ father God show me your truth he says but Joseph it Matthew 1 22 through 25 but Joseph Joseph was the son of Jacob with the surname of Eli of Nazareth announcement 160 announcement 160 is more of his words you know Matthew 116 Luke 3 23 these are the ones he's given as reference did not attend or know Mary until she gave her birth to her son to whom he gave the name Jesus. I, Larabas, received this information in the year 63 on May 5th in Nazareth from people who did not know the true story. But with this ambiguous, ambiguous message, Rabbi Rabbas threw into the hand of the critics the torch of doubt about Mary's virginity after my birth. We're going to discuss that later too. Now in this one, Matthew 1.16 and Luke 3.23 were actually correct. Before we go into the others. Because I have found several verses that he gives us as the location and they're not. They're off. We're going to jump down to number three because I'm going to have to actually go back to that in just a minute. Do I need to go over all that? <coughs> Excuse me. Then also there's the, the children question. He, they're saying. Do I need to go ahead and do that, Laura? Luke 2. 7 says Mary gave birth to her firstborn son in Bethlehem and thus makes the same dubious report as Larabas Matthew again since he also received it from people who did not know the true event I was Mary's first and only son as it is written in the story of my youth and it gives his other other book but he gives I'm gonna go ahead and do this he gives scripture then to back up what he's saying Isaiah 7 14 which was correct. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. She shall call his name Emmanuel. But then he gives. Isaiah 9.5. Isaiah 9.5 is incorrect. It says. For every battle of the warrior. Is with confused noise. And garments rolled in blood. 
but this shall be with the burning and full of fire. What he should have said, and if he was Jesus Christ, he would know exactly what is the correct verse. Isaiah 9, 6. And that says, For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be a government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I'm doing this to, to bring a point about. That's why I'm not trying to just bash this. I'm doing it to bring a point about. Then he also gave, fake Jesus also gave, Micah 5.1. Which reads, Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid siege against us. They have, they shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. Now again, this is supposed to be referring to Mary giving birth to her, her firstborn and, and of the prophecy concerning Mary conceiving. What he meant was Micah 5 2. But thou... Bethlehem, Ephrata, do thou be little among the thousand, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of these shall be shall come forth unto me, that is to be a ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old of old, from everlasting. Gotta be careful what you put in. There may be some some translational errors and things and other things happening of late but this this word of god has still proven true when other things have not it's historically true archaeologically true and prophetically true because it's the living word of god this is your standard to go by first and foremost All right. Again, on um, it said had talking about the 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 children, and, and he also talks about. I need to go ahead, Lord. Yeah. Okay, Lord. I'm just trying to get it. He gives some more correct verses. He's talking about this is about his um them being astonished at his it gives six, John 6 42 it's not this Jesus the son of Joseph who father and mother we know how then can he say I come from heaven he's talking about how that it's mistranslated that Joseph is his father Lord what do you want me to do okay Larabas Matthew 13 54 through 57 recounts when Jesus came to his hometown of Nazareth, he taught in their school in such a way that all were astonished and said, From where did he get such wisdom? Rabba learned the passage 54 through 56 in year 56 of May 5th, read John 7 15 through 52, 7 15 and 52. Again, he's referring, saying, He read John, so he got the word, so John's okay, and we've done verified that, you know, I'm getting to show you where John. Proves that Luke and Matthew are not so off. Isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't the, he? Isn't his mother Mary named Mary, and his brothers jo Joseph, Joel the eldest, who died in the year? Okay, now that's not even in the Bible, so I can't. Say, at the age of fifty-eight, Simeon, Judah, Samuel, and Jacob. Yeah, and his sister are they not with us? And they were annoyed with him. Annoyed. It doesn't say annoyed. But, you know. They were offended is what it says. Okay. And then, um, John seven fifty two that he was saying that he had read. They answered and said to him, Art thou also 
of Galilee, search and look for out of Galilee arises no prophet. Okay. John 6.42 tells, tells you that also in um, Capernaum in the year 30 on October 8th, they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How then can he say, I have come from heaven? Luke 3.23 says, And Jesus, when he began to teach, was about 30 years old and was mistaken for a son of Joseph. A son of Joseph. Who was a son, descendant, of Eli named Jacob. Luke 4.22 tells the same story as Larabbas, Matthew 13.54-56, where he only briefly mentions the words of the people that ask, Is not this Joseph's son? Mark 6.3 tells of the event in the synagogue of Nazareth. Okay. Then he says, Father Jesus. This is Father Jesus speaking. Jesus, fake Jesus. These reports led many a critic to believe that Mary had several other children with Joseph beside myself. While these sons were the children of Joseph from his first wife, Tamar, which I could find no record of Tamar in any of the history, which that's that's possible because of history. They're also mentioned in Matthew 12, 46, Mark 3, 32, and Luke 8, 20 on, on another occasion. And he's right. These are mentioned where it talks about Jesus having brothers and sisters. But here's his, his reason for the sisters. And for the sisters mentioned, they were not the daughters of Joseph, but of his poor relatives who were called my sisters because they lived and acted according to the mind and will of both Joseph and Mary. I can't dispute that either way. Had Rabbis, had Rabbis Mark and Luke been eyewitnesses, they would certainly have brought the truth as noted by the Apostle Matthew in the year 32, which does not allow for ambiguity. I'm just trying to get this. I got my pages out of order. They also, he was mentioning, which I thought was kind of, Rabbi Matthew, Rabbi Matthew and Luke, because they were not eyewitnesses, again, Matthew and Luke are not eyewitnesses, according to this fake Jesus, are to blame for the fact that very many Bible Christians consider me to be a son of Joseph, and that I have raised myself up to be a God-man through my pious way of life. The following evidence would teach you the opposite. And here's his proof. Number one, Jehovah God, Jehovah, God the Father from eternity, God's counsel or God's wisdom, which in spiritual language means the Son of God and being God's power or Holy Spirit, and yet being Joseph's son, which even some Protestant priests believe, is hair-raising nonsense of the biblical to superficiality of the religious office now we understand he is god's son is joseph is his father in name the holy spirit moved upon mary in, in, in inserted the body god made of god and man into mary no sexual act into mary but joseph married mary even though he knew she was pregnant they were already in spouse. They already considered married. But he, he didn't divorce her. Now understand this, please. Mary had to have been a very devout woman of God. Young woman of God. That loved God. That followed the law. Because she lived under the, the Levitical law. She lived under Moses. She, to be hand chosen. Yeah, she was favored. She was favored because she lived a life chasing after God. She loved God. I am not saying anything bad. To be chosen to bear Jesus, the Son of God, she was a godly, godly, well-favored, well-beloved of heaven. Number two, Rabbis 28.7, tells that the angels said, to the woman. Now this is after he's risen. Behold I have foretold you. Um, excuse me. 
He will go before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I have foretold you. That's in scripture. Now he's saying that's not real. But no passage of the New Testament certifies this prophecy of the angel. The question is, did the angel lie or the pseudo Matthew, fake Matthew, See, Robus has gone about, and what he found written, and what he heard said, he used all these things, and hence the contradiction. So he's saying, again, Matthew 28, 7 is what he's saying. He will go before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, behold I have foretold you. I'm going to actually pull that verse up. I hear that's what the Lord's telling me. And again, this is in the book of Matthew, which he's saying is not true. And again, Luke was actually not an eyewitness. But Matthew was. Matthew 28, 7. Should have had this pulled up. I've been in it all week. Ever since I got the email. All these verses, making sure, praying. 28.7. I'm going to go up to 5. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. Now, there's verses before that where Jesus has told, like during the supper, last supper, he tells them, you'll meet, meet me in, in Galilee. But this says, Robus 28, 7, this is what he's saying, tells that the angel said to the woman, he will go before you into Galilee, and there you will see him. Behold, I foretold you. Not the exact wording, but you know the meaning. And then he says, fake Jesus, but no passage of the New Testament, New Testament certifies this prophecy of the angel. Certifies it, meaning it didn't happen. The question is, did the angel lie or the pseudo Matthew? See, Robus has gone about and what he found written and what he heard said, he used all these things and hence a contradiction. That's false. There are two instances right off I found where Jesus met the disciples in Galilee after his resurrection. Now, one is in Matthew. The other is in John. Matthew 28, 16 through 17. Again, we just read Matthew 28, 7. 5, 6, and 7. 16 through 17. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee. Into Galilee, where Jesus had told him to meet him. Then the angel said, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Okay, that's in the book of Matthew. They will argue, well, that's in the fake book. Let's go to John. I'm going to read a few scriptures. John 21, 2 through 13. Then were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee. Okay, right off. In Galilee. And the sons of Zebedee and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into his ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, that ran through me. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat about him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, 
but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish lay thereon, and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three, and for all there was so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing this was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. That's not in Matthew. That's in John. Two occurrences where it verifies that they went to Galilee, as Jesus had said. Some people say it's contradicting the way that it reports. No, no. When you, you pull everything together and pull up a line, you're going to see it all fits in. So, just, so in addition, there's more than just the book of Matthew in which the angel tells the disciples to meet Jesus in Galilee. It's also found in Mark. So, not only in Matthew, where the angel says, Jesus will meet you in Galilee. It's in Mark, another book that is not being disputed here, 16, 5 through 7. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where he laid. They laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. And there shall ye see him as he has, um, as he said unto thee. So right there. Another proving. This is false. This is a demon spirit. Pretending to be Jesus Christ. That's what it is. And this is where a lot of people get the basis that Mary is forever a virgin. Be careful what you read. Did I read anything else? I went into the, the link she gave me and absolutely not. Now we're going to address a little bit about, about Mary. Since I have proven by using other books in the scripture, not the two disputed two, that this man was wrong. That he doesn't know scripture, location. Jesus Christ knows exactly where every, even though the scripture was not given in book and chapter like we've divided it, he still knows exactly where every jot and tittle is because he is the word of God. He knows there's no error in him. So he's got, there was what, two or three verses I think he called off wrong. Yet I, I finished, I still went on. Okay, now we're going to go back to the part. Yeah, we're going to do that now, aren't we, Lord? Where he said in Luke 2 7 says Mary gave birth to her firstborn son in Bethlehem and thus makes the same dubious report as a robber since he also received it from people who did not know the true event. I was Mary's firstborn and only son. There is actually I think it's in here twice. I don't know if I wrote it down here. It mentions and says Jesus was Mary's firstborn son. Not just the one he mentioned. But the verse I want to go into is Matthew 1, 24 and 25, where it talks about Joseph knowing her. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took him to his wife. 
and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Now we know that phrase, he knew her, means sexual intercourse, husband and wife coming together. But in this particular instance, it's not the same word as in the Old Testament. So I was like, Lord, show me, because it's you've got to confirm your word. The word knew, to know, to knew, or, or knew, is Strong's, I wrote, didn't write down the number, it's the Greek word, Gnosko, G-I-N-O-S-K-O, which means to learn, to know, come to know, get knowledge of, perceive, feel, to become known, to know, understand, perceive, have knowledge of, to understand, to know, sexual intercourse with man and woman, to become acquainted with or know. We also see this same word, this is the second time, used in reference to sexual intercourse. And I'm calling it what it is because in Luke 1, 34, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now we understand in that, that passage is where Gabriel is telling her that she is going to conceive and bear a son. She knows the old law. She knows the prophecies. And she's asking, how can I do that when I have not been with anybody? How, how are you going to make that possible? You know. It's the same word. It's the same word. To know. And Joseph being written. And knew her not. The same word. As in, the Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be seen? I know not a man. When we read the scriptures here in Luke, where the angel is talking to Mary and tells her she is favored of the Lord, we know she knew the law and loved God. She would know the prophecy is Isaiah 7 about a virgin giving birth to the Messiah. Her question she asked the angel is concerning, how is it possible for me to have a child without sexual intercourse? How shall this be seen? I know not a man. This exact same word used in Matthew one twenty five to know, knew. So from this, we know Matthew one twenty five when it says, And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus, that they do not have sexual intercourse till after Jesus was born. According to the Bible verses, it said Jesus had brothers and sisters, and also Mary is no longer a virgin. According to this, she had a married life. She still blessed among women, highly favored, but she was still human. And she cannot get and she cannot get you to heaven or to Father God. The only way is through Jesus Christ. Now I'm gonna point out the fact too, a lot of people said that you know Joseph had other children, is what they're saying too, and that Mary only had Jesus. We also have to understand, again, the time Mary's living in. Levit Levitical law. The last reference of Joseph, Mary's husband, was when Jesus was 12 years old teaching at the temple, Luke 2, 41-52. He's not even mentioned during the crucifixion. Mary's there alone. If something happened to Joseph, then what happens at this time, if she did not have a child through Joseph, a seed for him, then she was to marry his brother to have seed in his name. She would not have remained a widow. Pray about that. But there is um, an example in Scripture. Can I write that down? Oh, it's about something else. But there, um, it talks about the um, where the Pharisees, Sadducees, were trying to. Um, Trip Jesus up more or less, and asked him about. Um, I thought I wrote that down. 
asked him about, you know, a woman had a, a husband and he died and left no didn't didn't have any seed. A seed as children. And so the next brother married her and she ended up marrying seven brothers with no seed because that's the Levitical that's showing you that's the Levitical law. You marry, you know, to have seed to that that dead brothers or dead, you know, um, name. And they were trying to trick Jesus up in that point, asking who would um his wife would she be in the resurrection when when they get to heaven. And it says in there they need they're like the, the angels in heaven. They never they, they don't marry, they never give in marriage. That doesn't mean that the angels are, are have no sex. It means that there's no marriage in heaven. We're married to Jesus Christ. You know? It doesn't say that in heaven you're going to produce and have children and you're going to... It says we are married to Jesus Christ. We're married to Father God. He is our Heavenly Father. He, but He is also our spiritual husband. So I'm asking you just take this to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. And I apologize for not having that. Oh, here's, here's another part that I was going to read. Lord, okay. I'm going to go ahead and do this too. In Matthew 10, 34 through 38, Luke 14, 26 to 27, there are requirements set for every person that every reader of the Bible should be upset and angry about. So he's telling you, you should be upset and angry about this. But the critics throw logs under my feet. The critics throw logs under my feet. And say that I made demands on mankind that no one can fulfill who has a heart for his parents, his wife, his children, etc. That I had no heart and no understanding about human nature and so made insane, insane demands on Christians. Therefore, it is well worth your while to read my enlightenments in the announcement again, sending you back to his other fake stuff. In order to make your God understand what he spoke. Instead of proclaiming to the world, in order to make your God understand what he spoke. Instead of proclaiming to the world the samples of your ignorance of the spiritual meaning of the biblical language. Matthew 19.20 says, Whoever leaves his father, mother, wife, children, brother, sister, and fields for Christ will receive a hundredfold payment in the spirit realm, which is really grotesque. A hundred women, but be a human being and have a hundred parents. That is the biggest nonsense you can write, and yet it is printed like that. This is blasphemy. Are the overwise critics who attack me, the again fake Jesus speaking, because of such spirit spirituality, spoken verses, and throw them under the feet of their mockery? are to be pitied that they do not have so much reasoning spirit out of themselves to consider that a man cannot have a hundred parents after all. So this verse must certainly mean something other than what is materially understood by. Read the Enlightenments about this in Announcement 1. What? If this is Jesus Christ speaking, then why did he get the verse location wrong? When he is the word made into flesh. He gave Matthew 19.20. The young man saith unto him, All these things that I kept from my youth up, what lack I? The verse he's referring to is Matthew 19.29. Everyone that hath forsaken house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my namesake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. It also spoken about, again, taking you to Mark, a different book. Mark 10, 29, 30. Then Peter began to say unto the Lord, We have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that's, that hath left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, 
houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life this is meaning you are going to get your you're going to be blessed you're going to have your needs met places to live places to lodge your food back brothers and, and brothers in christ it's but it has to be spiritually discerned because the lord will bless you in the physical as well as in the spiritual but it doesn't mean one certain thing makes up that hundredfold it does not mean you're going to have 100 parents he's right on that you're not going to have 100 parents you're not going to have 100 wives you're going to have blessings that mount up to a hundredfold physical you may not always see them it could be in him saving you from an accident it could be him protecting your children. The hundredfold, the hundredfold. And then we know by the talents, and I think it's Mark 4, I think. It's it's 4 or 6. It's in, in Mark 3 through 6, as far as reading again. Where it talks about some have 30 talents, some have 60-fold. No, 30, 60, 100. That's what it means, 100, 30, 60-fold. What you put in, those who are 100% sold out. Have a hundredfold blessing because they've given everything. God's going to supply everything because they're going to trust God a hundred percent. These verses are referring to the hundredfold return you get when you forsake all and follow Jesus Christ, including the persecution that comes with it. It also shows again the word of God must be spiritually discerned for someone to understand its full meaning. Jesus Christ would know this. This one speaking here apparently does not realize it is in the Bible. It tells us that the things of God have to be spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2, 12-16 Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom speaketh, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish, foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself judgeth no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So when he is sitting here. The fake Jesus is sitting here. And making fun of the way this is written. Saying you will have. Understand this. You will have hundredfold in the physical. In the supplying of your needs. My God shall supply all my need. According to his riches and glory. That by Christ Jesus. That need is all the needs made up into one. And I don't know about you, but my life, I've had more than one need. And I learned as I grow closer to the Lord, I am blessed beyond blessed in ways I never dreamed. The more I let go of this world, the more blessings I receive, but the more persecution I get too. I'm aiming for the hundredfold. What about you? And I, I'm not, please, I am saying this in love. Anita, I'm not saying this to be to be mean or to, to understand. I have went through scriptures different than the ones he's pointed out, taken different from the book of Matthew and Luke, and shown that what was written in Matthew and Luke is correct. But furthermore, the fact that he cannot get his scriptures right in himself, the word made in flesh. If this was real Jesus Christ, there would be no error. No error. So therefore, I have to go by what I have in my Bible, which tells me that Joseph did not know Mary until after he had Jesus Christ. So... Whether the children were Joseph's, whether they were Joseph and Mary, the other, it does say that 
I need to find that, Lord. Since I have disproved the lies against Matthew and about Luke. Where is the, the verses, Lord? There are two verses. You can look it up. When you go into verse born, that actually tells you that Jesus is called Mary's firstborn. Mary's firstborn. Her firstborn. What does that mean? The first child she had. Her firstborn. Her firstborn. <laughs> Come on, people. I'm sorry. Just. And, and, he, and the Lord confirms it from one book to another. He will always confirm his word. 2 Corinthians 13, 1. I might have to look that up. I hear, I hear you, Lord. If you don't show me where it is on my paper, I'm going to have to. I think you just did. I had it first written down on this one. I was just, I really, I went into this praying. Lord, show me the truth. I want to know the truth. And I am teachable, but I'm not going to receive no receive a false doctrine. And and the fact is, from what the Bible is saying here, and I know a lot of people will say that I run into this, that Mary was made sinless when they, they inserted Jesus into her. And they'll quote all these verses about grace and that she was favored in, in the word. But most of those verses, when you look them up, says grace through Christ Jesus, through Jesus Christ, salvation through Jesus Christ. How could Mary have been saved through Jesus Christ if she was just conceiving him, the Holy Spirit? You have to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. For that gift of salvation through grace. And I'm not trying to point, you know, I'm just, I'm seeing, Lord, we have to be careful to not lift anybody above Jesus Christ and Father God, no matter who they are. And again, Mary was highly favored and blessed to be chosen to pair the Son of God, even understanding the character of Mary. She knew the cost to a point. She could have been stoned for being pregnant before, before she had come physically together with Joseph. If he had chosen not to divorce her, I mean, if he had chosen to divorce her and to not marry her, keep that marriage, they could have taken her out and stoned her. She's understood the dangers involved too. And the stigma, you know, of being pregnant and not adding up to, you know, nine months into the physical coming together of the marriage. Mary was a beautiful example of what we need to be. She was not afraid to endure the persecution. She was not afraid to be an outcast because she knew the end result. She was going to give birth to the Savior of the world that was going to deliver in the end her people Israel. He is their Messiah. And they will come to that knowledge. So please don't Please don't think I'm trying to, to belittle her greatness. I'm not. But she can't get you to heaven. The Word of God says the only way 
for salvation to Father God is through Jesus Christ. It's in there more than once. It confirms itself. 2 Corinthians 13, 1. This is why also I use different books. Different Two verses is considered an established word. That some people say it says out of the mouth. You know, so therefore you got to have them speak in it. Well, you got more than two people when you have two different books. Like John and Mark. 2 Corinthians 13, 1. And this is in here multiple times in the Word of God too. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Established, set in stone, unmovable and changing. So when the Word of God confirms itself in one place or another, it's established, it's set in stone. So... Matthew was called by Jesus Christ personally. He was not an eyewitness. His word, his book, the New Testament, there are scrolls upon scrolls upon scrolls that confirm it. And the Old Testament too. But the new ones once it is in question. That prove the authenticity of it. But beyond that. Look at the prophecies. Look at the. His, historical. Look at the archaeology. Then tell me. Which would you prefer to believe in. Something, a visit from a fake Jesus to a man in the 16, 1900, somewhere like that, that can't even get his verses straight, that's an error, or build your foundation on something that's proven true time and time again. Jesus Christ, he is the rock. This is the rock. This is sinking sand. Guard what you put in, people. Guard yourself fiercely. Guard what you hear. Guard what you see. Garbage in, garbage out. In Psalms, as I will set no evil thing before my eyes. Well, also in Mark, it talks about your ears. Guard what you put in your ears. Mark 4, 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. Be careful. Take heed. Watch what you do. Watch what you do. Guard your ears. Guard your eyes, guard your heart, put a lock on your tongue, ask the Lord to help you, this tongue will get you in trouble, alright, Anita, I hope you understand that I am not trying to point you out I'm not I just the Lord said it need to be shared with everybody and I haven't revealed who you you know your full name and this is something that I made the comment on the video and it's needed to be addressed on the video but I thank you because like I said I went to the Lord Jesus Christ lady before him in prayer was my Holy Ghost alarms going off when I first started? Yes, it was. But I said, Lord, do I per do I finish? Or do you want me to stop? Okay, I done sealed myself. I, I'm not getting anything, going into anything like that unless I'm covered and the Lord says proceed. So please guard what you put in. 
You're responsible for what you put into your being, to your mind, to your soul, to your ears. You are responsible for what you put in yourself. And if you have children, what you allowed them to put into them. All right. I'm going to get off here. Is there anything else, Lord? Please know. Again, I am doing this in love. I'm not pointing out any religion in particular. It just so happens to be about the, the mother of Mary. I mean, the mother of Jesus, Mary. If you love Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and he's your Lord and Savior, you're my brother and sister in Jesus Christ. That's what matters. But if you're praying to anybody else besides Jesus Christ to get to Father God, you're in potential danger. And I have to warn you. All right. From Tennessee. God bless. Stay under the blood. I love you all. We have to do what we're called to do. Even in the hard times. And this is a hard thing to do. Love you. God bless.